Hello, this is Britt Caswell with another example video. In today's video, I'm covering example 1 from lesson 10-1 in the Savas Realize Algebra 1 textbook. Uh, today's video is all about the key features of the square root function. So remember the square root is this little radical that you have here. Now, on Savas, uh, they introduced the square root function with a nice little t-chart here. All right. Now notice for the x values, they picked all these nice little perfect squares. All right. So 0, 1, 4, 9, 16. Those are all perfect squares. And when they take the square root of them, they get 0 through 4 here. And so what happens is you tend to get this graph that looks like this. It's almost like a parabola that fell over. In fact, it kind of is a parabola that fell over. All right. And so some of these key anchor points, all right, my two go-to anchor points tend to be 0, 0, and 1, 1. All right, I use those when I'm graphing all the time. I usually use 4, 2 also because it is convenient. All right. Um, and these are the anchor points that I use to move around the graph when I'm doing transformations. So when we talk about... Um, translations or stretches or compressions. Now there's some some key features here that are really important that are in these paragraphs. Uh, I hate to read it to you but I'll also explain it as well. The domain is restricted to x is greater than 0 because only non-negative numbers have a real square root. All right so what they're saying remember the domain is all the x values on the function. So notice this is only on the positive side of the x-axis. And so because you can't take the square root of a negative number, um, it keeps it there to that positive side. We call that a restricted domain. And since the square root of a number cannot be negative, the range is that the function is greater than 0, or y is greater than 0 could also be equal to 0, because the square root of 0 is 0. All right, so again, because when you take a square root, a positive number comes out, that's what causes it to be on the top side of the graph. Now notice, the x and y intercepts of the graph are both at 0. And that's because the square root of 0 is 0. And this graph has a positive slope over every part of it. And so we say that that positive slope causes the graph to be increasing for all values within its domain. All right, so I think I covered all of those. So let's talk about the triad. So the triad asks us several things. It says to graph the function, which I have hidden under these handy dandy boxes. And it wants to know what are the intercepts, the domain, and the range. So if I'm looking at this, I see a minus here. That negative a value, if you remember your transformations, is going to cause a vertical reflection. That means that we flip the graph upside down. All right, so here's the graph. I'm going to zoom in on it so we could see a little better. All right, so a couple things. I look for some of my anchor points so that I could discuss them. So the first thing is that the x and y intercepts are both zero. All right, so flipping the graph upside down did not change their intercepts. All right. Now the domain of this graph, if I look at this domain, I'm thinking about how far to the left and how far to the right it goes. So this graph goes to the left and then stops at zero. And when I go to the right, it goes on for forever. So I have all the numbers that are bigger than or equal to zero. So I'm going to say that the domain is x or is greater than or equal to zero. Now the range is going to have changed here because I flipped our graph upside down. So if I'm thinking about up and down movement, this graph stops going up at y equals zero. And if I go down, this graph goes down for forever. So 
I would say that the range of this is all the y values are lesser than or equal to zero. Now, Savas did have the notation. They said f of x is less than or equal to zero. That's fine also. All right, so let's take a look at this last one. This is part b. Um, this division of 10. I want to talk about that. So notice how that divided by 10 is inside of the square root. All right, it's inside the radical. So that means that it's a horizontal change. And so horizontal changes always feel backwards. So usually when you um, divide by a number or multiply by a number between 0 and 1, it's usually a compression when you're talking about it vertically. Here, when you divide by a number or multiply by something between 0 and 1, it's going to be a stretch. So when I go to delete this graph, you're going to notice that it looks like I grab the graph on the left and the right and I pull it apart. That looks very similar to a vertical compression. So it's easy to make those kind of weird understandings of things. So if I put a couple anchor points on here, here's the one that would normally be at 0. And then normally we would have a point at 1, 1. But instead, it's at 10, 1. And that's because we stretched it by that scale factor of 10. That's not a super huge deal for you to know right now. But it is some kind of interesting fact that I want knocking in your noggin for a little while. All right, so notice this graph still has an x and y intercept at 0. That didn't change. All right, the only thing that really changes that intercept is when you slide the graph around. All right, so if you do translations. Talking about our domain, our domain is still the same thing because it's still on the right-hand side of our graph. And then our range here is very similar to the original graph that we looked at where it's y is greater than 0, and that's because it's going uphill. It's an increasing graph. It's going a lot slower than the first graph, um, but it's still increasing, so it's still going up from that 0, 0. So there we have it. That is some of the key features of the square root function. Until next time.